Ah, all right. Falling off my my stool. My stool has no legs. This is why I'm always falling off this thing. I think it's supposed to be good for your core or something. <laughs> Welcome back, friends. It's Anders. Today on the Anders Ericsson Show, we are doing the Widow's Kiss. This is an old classic from the 19th century. We are gonna be making this a few different ways because long ago, this was a very sweet cocktail, fell out of fashion, came back in fashion, but the ratios are no longer what they once were. So today I'm gonna make this not two ways, but three ways, because I'm gonna do the original specs from the original recipe, and then we are gonna make what is now essentially the industry standard for the Widow's Kiss, and then I am going to make it a third way, which is how I like the Widow's Kiss, because I've really struggled with this drink. This is a tough one for me to balance. It may be a tough one for you to balance. We'll talk about this when I'm making it. So if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's go make a few Widow's Kisses to the bar. The Widow's Kiss is a cocktail that's very old. It dates back to 1895, and we have George Capeller, or Kapeller, however you pronounce that name, we have George to thank for this drink. He came up with it when he was bartending at New York's Holland House Hotel, and he wrote about it in the book, Modern American Drinks. Now, the year 1895 is not modern to us now, but back then, these drinks were modern because this drink has two French liqueurs which was not all that common in cocktails at the time. Prior to this, you would sip on them neat. Or if you were to have it in a cocktail, it was common to have it in a pousse cafe, where all the ingredients are separated. And this cocktail utilizes two very powerful, famous French liqueurs, Benedictine and yellow chartreuse, big flavors. And it makes for a very sweet drink because it is half liqueur and people loved it. It was a huge roaring success until prohibition happened. When prohibition happened, the entire universe forgot about this cocktail. Then in the early 2000s, there was something that is known as the cocktail renaissance. And this is when I started bartending. That just happened to be the same time. I, I, I wasn't forward thinking or anything. And bartenders were digging in old cocktail books, finding old recipes and resurrecting them and the Widow's Kiss was one of them. However, that cocktail, if you remember, was very sweet and the general public's tastes had changed over the course of a hundred years, hundred plus years. Yeah, what the public wanted was more of a spirit forward sipping cocktail, which is what it became. So here, what happened is these bartenders were adjusting the ratios to their taste. And one such bartender was Jim Meehan. Yes, he brought back the Widow's Kiss in a new form. And we have a strong sipping cocktail. Wonderful this time of year here in Chicago. It's getting cold, it's autumn. And it was very different than the original. And this is the cocktail that I was introduced to as the Widow's Kiss. Truth be told, I'm not a huge fan of any Widow's Kisses that I've had. And that's not to say it's a bad cocktail, it's just for my taste. Although there are aspects of both cocktails that I do like. So today I'm gonna make it three ways. I'm gonna do the original, the more contemporary drier version, and then the ratios that I like for this drink. And you can decide which one you think you like the best. Or if you want, come up with your own ratios. And this goes to show that you can try new things. You can change things. In fact, there's another bartender who's very famous because of the Widow's Kiss named Deke Dunn who added cognac to this recipe. I'm not gonna do that, although that does work very well. So, the booze. For this cocktail, we will need apple brandy, yellow chartreuse, Benedictine, and Angostura bitters. For this cocktail, I am using Laird Straped Applejack 86, which is lower proof than their bottled and bond version, which is typically my go-to. But for this particular cocktail, I found that I like the lower proof version a little bit better. If you want, you could use Calvados, which is a French apple brandy, or if you have the higher proof bottled and bond Applejack, that's still gonna be good. It's just gonna be a little bit hotter. Yellow chartreuse, this is what was called for in the original cocktail. There really is no substitute for this. Same with the Benedictine. These are the two French liqueurs. Angostura gives it a little clove, little spice, goes really well with the apple. With that, we can build. First, I'm gonna be making this the original and the contemporary way. Do this really quickly and then we will talk about the differences and make the final version. The original recipe says to shake the cocktail. We'll start with the apple brandy. One ounce of your apple brandy. We're gonna do half an ounce of Benedictine, half an ounce of the yellow chartreuse, and two dashes of Angostura bitters. That's the original. Now for the contemporary version, we're gonna do two ounces of apple brandy. Oh, and this one's stirred. Two ounces of apple brandy. A quarter of an ounce of the Benedictine, 
quarter of an ounce of the yellow chartreuse and two dashes of Angostura bitters. So as you can see, the liqueurs are dropped way down. The apple brandy is bumped up. So we know that's gonna be a drier cocktail. Now we can add ice. Where's my scooper? Oh, what the hell? Hold on. Where's my scooper, boys? <laughs> had it ready already. All right, now we can practice our multitasking. Start stirring first, because it's gonna take a little bit longer. This will be about 30 seconds, and we're gonna shake this for about 15 seconds. So get both clocks going now. Make it nice and cold on your hand. Be a bit more patient with the stirring cocktails. Grab your chilled glassware, both are served up. First, the original version. Double strain right into the glass. No garnish for this one. We can strain off the contemporary into another cocktail glass. Okay. That's a little short in this glass, but we'll go with it. The Contemporary Widow's Kiss gets a cherry. And there we have the original and the contemporary version of the Widow's Kiss. I'm gonna taste these really quickly, talk about a little bit of the difference, and then make a third. The original, cheers. It's sweet, very sweet, definitely herbal. I get a lot of the yellow chartreuse. I don't get so much of the apple. You can even see that it looks different. That's because air is incorporated from the shaking. Keeps it kind of light. I would definitely say dessert cocktail. Now for the contemporary version. Cheers. It's hotter, it's stronger. I do like the finish on it. Not necessarily a dessert cocktail, more like an old fashioned. What I like about this one is the texture. I actually like the heavier, silkier texture. I do want to taste a bit more of the Benedictine. Benedictine and the Chartreuse are similar, but they offer different things in the cocktail. The Benedictine offers honey and spice. The Chartreuse is more herbal and menthol. And it's that honey and spice that I want with the apple, because that's just a great pairing. Mm. The cherry works here because this one is stronger and not quite as sweet, but I am going to change the garnish because my cocktail will be a touch sweeter than this one and I want to brighten it up. Now for the third version, which is my ratios. Okay, grab your mixing glass. We're gonna stir this one and we will start with the apple brandy. An ounce and a half of apple brandy to that half an ounce of the Benedictine, one quarter of an ounce of yellow chartreuse, breaking up that equal part Benedictine and chartreuse, and two good dashes of Angostura bitters. Now let's add ice and stir. Usual 30 seconds or so. You want that ice to drop into the cocktail, round off all the edges, nice and cold on the side, and I think we are ready. Grab your chilled glass. I'm introducing a new glass here. This, I got at a secondhand shop. Strain your cocktail right into your chilled glass. I'm just going to express some lemon oil right on top just to brighten it up, hit the sides. I think I'm just gonna discard this because the glass is pretty enough. So there we have the third version, my version of the Widow's Kiss. Cheers. I do like the color of this one. Ooh, first of all, I like the lemon on the nose. So here I can taste definitely the apple from the apple brandy, a honey sweetness from the Benedictine, a spicy note that I get from the Angostura bitters, and then I'm left with an herbal, cooling herbal note from the yellow chartreuse. So I think for me, I really like this balance. It is slightly more sweet than the previous version, and it's less sweet than the original version. So it does kind of fall in the middle here. This would also be good on a large cube of ice. There it is. Same ingredients, different ratios, different outcomes. Don't be afraid to change things up. You don't have to be a stickler to the original or to somebody else's ingredients, even mine. Do we find your own ratios? This was a fun experiment. I hope you enjoyed it. Try your own version. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, what you tried, what you're doing. Cheers. Hey everyone, it's me from this morning, here to announce the winners from last week's giveaway. I've got them all here on my handy dandy post-it note. Uh, grand prize winner is Denise Tepfer in California. The runner-ups are Eric Doan in California and Kevin Latucci in Illinois. Congratulations, everyone. Let's do this again, and hopefully we can make it international because I hear all of you, everybody wants to do international, and this wasn't international, and I understand I, I this is our first giveaway. We're learning as we go. So cheers, congratulations to the winners. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.